Hi everyone, Leticia Caro here with Tish Talks Tech, and today we have the best treat ever. We have with us Professor Jeffrey Decker. If you don't know who Jeffrey Decker is, let me tell you, this individual is like an assembler whisperer, the COBOL king. So just stay with us hang on tight, buckle up and get ready because this is a can't miss episode. So there you have it. Thanks for joining Tish Talks Tech. And Jeffrey, how are you? I'm doing great this morning. And I want to say thank you for having me, inviting me to, to talk on your show. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. It's always good to get an opportunity to say mainframe is king. And that's all there is to it. <laughs> I am so happy that you're here. And um, it's just one of those things where I'm just like, I can't believe. Again, here we go. I get to interview my heroes, uh, the heroes. And all of y'all don't wear capes, but you do in my little head. And I'm just so happy. <laughs> <laughs> We're flying through the air like Superman. Uh and Supergirl, and I'm just really, really happy that you, you know, you had time to come by. Uh, this is this is just amazing. So, what I'd like to do is I'd like to jump right in because, like I say every week, we only have one hour, and you know how we get to talking. <laughs> so, yes. yes. <laughs> so well, uh, you and I, we know how to we know how to banter. That's yes, the, that's for sure. So um, go ahead and tell tell us all about yourself. We're ready. Oh my gosh, I'll try to make this short. Um, <laughs> I'm a Kansas boy. Uh, I was born in Atchison, Kansas, and raised on the Kansas side of Kansas City, nice. and uh, in the southern suburbs. And uh, my dad was a barber and my mother was a cut and paste artist for a uh, large yearbook company. Nice. And so uh, I went to schools in the Shawnee Mission District, uh, which is a really good school district in Kansas City, uh, on the Kansas side of Kansas City. And uh, so I went to the University of Kansas and studied music. I started out there as a Bachelor of Arts in Human, or Bachelor of Science maybe, in Human Biology, because I was pre-med. I wanted to be a doctor. Nice. And I actually got four years through that and decided this is just not for me. So I actually that had all the... brave. Well, it cost me a lot of extra money, but that's yeah. just the way it is. Right. And so um, I actually got a, a music degree. It took me an extra two years to finish the core courses for music history and got a Bachelor of Arts in music, which I was the first graduate in that program at KU. And so I floundered for a long time, actually two full years trying to find work that was gonna, I don't know if I even thought about a career back at that time, but I uh, actually was floundering and through a friend of mine, I met Dr. Robert Ranney who was, is my mentor, an assembler god. Uh, it's my understanding he was the chief systems programmer at Oak Ridge National Laboratory for many years. And he taught him, I think he pretty much taught himself assembler back in the day when they got their first, their first mainframe installed. Yeah, he worked in the, I think he worked in the mathematics department. Uh, mm -hmm. He actually had, I think he had a degree in nuclear chemistry. I don't remember exactly what his PhD is in, but they came in kind of like hidden figures and hidden figures. And they asked who in the world could, uh, could you know, program this mainframe. Yeah. And so he raised his hand as my understanding and became an assembler God. And the hardest teacher in the whole world. <laughs> And so it's through him that I came to NIU and started the master's program in computer science. I had to take COBOL in the summer of 1988. 
never having seen any kind of computer code or having done anything. The only thing we had I had been exposed to back then was using a CRT to look up patient accounts so I could call insurance companies to see if they were ready to pay patient account bills for a doctor's yeah. corporation. And I was an account, I was a collector basically. And so when I came to KU or NIU, I actually uh, learned how to program in six semesters and went from making small bucks to being, you know, fully professional and able to program in COBOL and assembler and knew my way around the mainframe all within, I think it was six semesters. And so, so I, you mean to tell me it didn't happen overnight? It wasn't overnight. <laughs> Not at all. I'll tell you this: it was a lot of overnights. Okay. You Talk know, nobody that. owned nobody owned uh, computers at home back then. Right. Except people that knew better, and they were still very expensive. And huge. So I had to work in the labs uh, around Northern Illinois University. Um, I was in the lab all night, every other night, sometimes nights in a row, trying to finish my assignments. And there was no choice otherwise. Yeah. And fortunately, I didn't have to go through the disaster of the card readers. This was after card readers. Thank goodness. So you weren't carrying whole decks with you? No. I tell students that the card readers were removed from NIU just before I arrived. Thank goodness. Maybe not just before, but a little while before. A little, just a little so, bit. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then when I graduated, uh, I actually got a job in Kansas City for the transfer agency division of Kemper Mutual Funds. Okay. And so I spent uh, five years there. And then my employment was transferred to another company in Kansas City that processes mutual fund transactions. And you'll be happy to hear I did programming in Ideal. I did programming for the CA Datacom database structures. Oh. Yeah, in COBOL and in Ideal, which is how we built, remember, uh, or you know this, how we built our onlines. Right. And so it was all in the financial industry. And then, um, in let me think, in uh, 2001, I contacted NIU and said, uh, do you want somebody to come up and help teach as an instructor? And they and Dr. Angadi, who was our chairman at the time, said, yes, I would love to have you. And so I came back to NIU to teach, and I've been here now, it'll be 22 years in August. And it's the best job in the world. 22 years teaching. I can't hear you. Oh, can you hear me now? Let's see what's going on here. I'm so sorry. It's okay. I don't know if it's me. No, nope. I I hear you just fine. Let me see if I can do something here. This is embarrassing. Not sure. I just switched to I just switched to Windows 11. Okay. Which may have been a mistake. No, so let's see that can never if be I've got mistake. something here I can do. <laughs> <clears throat> no. Can you hear me? <sighs> okay, now maybe. It just mm. might take a few seconds for... There it is. I can hear you now. <laughs> Good. Yes. Good. I'm so sorry. So sorry to do that to y'all. You are fine. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a secret that I tell folks a lot. Believe it or not, this technology is made by imperfect humans. Mm -hmm. Thus, it could be that the technology might be perfect in perception but imperfect so exactly exactly yeah, so we're we're good we're still here good. we well, got thank coffee you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll it very much yes, so uh, no 
Uh, yeah, so I've been here for a long time. I really love it. And yeah. it's amazing to see the students that have gone on and done such great things. And now they're stars in their field. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it wasn't that long ago that many of them were sitting in my class, my uh, upper level mainframe class at NIU. And uh, it's, it's, it's very gratifying. It's very gratifying. It's self-satisfying mm -hmm. to see these people so successful. And they're doing great things, not only in their jobs, but they're doing great things for the young who want to get into mainframe and do things right. uh, or want to program in general. You know, they're very helpful. And they come back to NIU and speak at our ACM presentations sometimes. And it's it's wonderful. It's wonderful. I'm afraid to say that now I bet there are students in my classes whose parents were in my first classes. Now, when I get to the point where there are grandkids, I'll know I've been there way too long. <laughs> no, no, that means that like like you you, you can stand the test of time. So, <laughs> well, you know, I'm teaching, old, that. I'm teaching old stuff, but it it constantly gets, you know, modernized and all the time. Yeah, and so I've I've tried to be, I've tried to be uh, uh keep up with what's going on. Uh, unfortunately, you know, I try to cram as much as I can, uh, just in in the two classes that I teach on mainframe. The first one being assembler. Mm. mainframe assembler and that is uh you know trying to teach that in one semester is a is a real task so teaching them new things about assembler or new instructions we don't really have time to do it unfortunately uh, right. there is no second level of assembler but then in my upper level class which is mm -hmm. CSCI 465 I go through QSAM uh, to teach them the QSAM macros okay. and some, and I, I rehash some of the stuff that I taught them in the CSCI 360 assembler class so that they can, um, you know, they'll have a little more advanced look at. They assembly. can have a, a better perspective of what to expect. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think I have seen you work like, firsthand because we worked together last year. Mm -hmm. So I had the privilege of watching how you just take nothing and turn it into everything. <laughs> and, and no, seriously, I was so amazed to this day. Uh, I can open up one of those videos and I just watch and I'm like, how did they do that? How did he give such good insight so and, and help people to focus? And you can explain it in such a way, in such a like when you were exp explaining uh, tables uh, in mm -hmm. Cobalt Course, I said, nobody has ever explained it that way. I've never mm -hmm. heard it that way. But you you do it. You're you're like the um, you're you're the magician. You're the wizard. Oh, you give me too much credit. <laughs> You know, there are smart students out there too. Yeah, yeah, no, and there's a lot of I I really enjoy um, instructors, teachers that can teach a subject and it just clicks. Now we've heard it very. We've heard the same. It's the same principle. It's the same table, right? It's the same mm -hmm. thing. But sometimes um, you have to hear it a couple of times, and then you have to hear it remixed as as my daughter would say you gotta remix it uh <laughs> you have to hear the remix yeah yeah you have to hear the remix um so instead of it you know uh being just flat uh and some people that do that for me is jeff bisty and you oh good yeah what? yeah good company to be in so <laughs> <laughs> so yeah yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you something um Coming from a musical background, I was at an advantage. You know, I think there was a time when IBM couldn't find enough people to work for IBM. And uh, I, I've been told there was a, a memo that went out saying, if you're going to do recruiting for IBM, back, way back in the day, they mm -hmm. said, find musicians that are looking for a new career. And I don't know if it's because of, you know, to learn a language, a programming language, you have to step away on your own 
and just work at it. Right. You know, you get the basics in class or and in the materials, but you just have to pound away at it to finally figure it out. And it's the same way with a musical instrument, learning a yeah. musical instrument or learning how to sing or whatever. You mm -hmm. have to spend time on your own. So when I teach classes, whether it's right or wrong, I always try to approach it from my the perspective that I learned it. Right. And it was very, very difficult for me, being a musician or not. Mm -hmm. And I struggled. In fact, I had to take, I'll admit it, I had to take one of my classes over again at Northern Illinois. It was a data structures and assembler. And uh, I spent a little bit much time in Kansas City with my fiance at the time and didn't get an assignment turned in. And I had to take that class again in the summer, which was even worse. Mm -hmm. But um, I finally learned it. And then I had to take, I'm going to tell you a story about this Dr. Robert Ranney that I mentioned. Oh, I'm ready. Okay. I love your stories. Well, I'll tell you what, he, was, <laughs> he was my mentor. And I know a lot of people from Cher and around the IBM world, they know him yep. or they know of him. And he was famous uh, for leading uh, Boy Scout-like meetings at Cher for building fires at share, he could build a fiber friction fire in about 20 seconds. And back in the day when they would allow someone to actually build a fire uh -huh. in one of the hotel conference rooms, he, sh he did it. Yeah. And he used that as a inspiration for, you know, if I can do it, we need to, we need to learn how to build fires to teach people yeah. or something similar. So uh, anyhow, Dr. Robert Ranney, I actually lived with him and uh, my friend who I met him through in Dr. Robert Ranney's house in DeKalb here my first summer. Mm -hmm. And I'll say real quick, that was the hottest summer in DeKalb history. He, Dr. Ranney had no air conditioning. Oh, no. And the I smell, melt. The smell <laughs> of the silage that they would transport through this corn country town uh, was unbelievable. So trying to sleep in that house was unbelievable. But anyhow. But, but look, you had a place to sleep. Yes, because okay. I really couldn't afford it. I couldn't afford to leave that job in Kansas City and come to DeKalb. But he said, I'll help you. I'll help you by giving you a place to live. And we'll see how you do. And then we can give you maybe an assistantship in the fall. So the story about Robert Ranney is, he was my teacher in CSCI 468, which is the undergraduate MVS systems programming course here at NIU, the hardest course I have ever, ever, ever taken. The mm -hmm. hardest. I can believe it. All in assembler, learning how to do MVS uh, specify programmed interrupt exit. Mm -hmm. My program was what he called it. Another one was a disassembler that took assembler and coded assembler. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it was it was an unbelievably hard course. And the thing that he did is you had to attend mm -hmm. because he gave a so-called pop quiz. We knew it was coming at the beginning of every class. Wow. And it was hard and it was- I'd be so hard. nervous. Oh, it was horrible. It was horrible. And if you- <laughs> and if you, were late, you have. <laughs> if you were late, to his class, you couldn't take the quiz. You and that's part of the class. Yeah. You had mm -hmm. to you had to actually bring a, a question on a piece of paper and put it on the front desk before class began. Mm -hmm. And he would answer those questions. And it had to be a well thought out question and something pertaining to the speed of light, which he demanded we knew, and all sorts of other stuff. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. But I learned. And I learned by the skin of my teeth, but that's right. where I became an assembler programmer. And then when I was the next semester, I had to take CSCI 568, which was the graduate level of his MVS system programming. Well, by then he knew you and he yeah. was much more friendly. He was much more friendly. But here's a really funny, it, I don't know if it's funny or not, but here's an interesting story. Mm -hmm all of the foreign graduate students and some of those that aren't 
that weren't foreign graduate students, just graduate students. Okay. They would drive 35 miles to attend a class, CSCI 568, to attend a section of that class in Naperville, Illinois, to avoid having to take the on-campus version with Dr. Ranny. Wow. Y'all were scared. So scared of him. <laughs> I remember. Don't be scared. First, I remember the first day of classes here at NIU in the summer of '88. Yeah. And we had labs in our building, in our computer science building, mm -hmm. at that time that were open for all students, and they had okay. CRTs, and you know you could submit to the mainframe here at NIU and stuff, and. Um, he wanted to show me around because he was kind of being a surrogate father at that time. Yeah. So he took me down to the lab and wanted to show me the schedule of the training sessions. And it wasn't posted on the bulletin board just inside the door of the lab. So there sat a student attendant and Robert Ranney looked at this guy and said, where are those schedules where's the schedule of of the lab training uh -huh. this man this student immediately broke out in a sweat immediately broke out in a sweat because he was so scared of dr robert ranny well he expected so much but that you oh, know he was the best though he was the best him. yeah he was the yeah. best yeah, he, he I was a I, phenomenal assembler program. Yeah, I I really I really like that story, and it just shows what lengths that a person would go to just to learn something because yeah. you know it's for your betterment, mm -hmm. right? And so yeah. I, I tell folks all the time, I'm like, look, you have to do these like super silly impossible things if you want that super silly impossible answer if you mm -hmm. want that outcome you have to be intentional right we have to be inventive you do that yeah yeah, yeah that's then, all very mm -hmm. absolutely very so. i i love that so what advice would you give to people that are interested uh in becoming mainframers or just tech in general well, you know, uh, I don't know if I had any uh, talent towards, you know, doing any kind of programming mm -hmm. at the beginning. I mean, I didn't understand anything that entire summer that I was doing. And we did, we did 12 programs all the way through tables. It was a COBOL course. Yeah. That's the course that, that everybody started with back in those days. How I made a how I made it in through the summer. It. Yeah, yeah, eight weeks. Mm. And I had never been exposed, but yeah. I had an open mind and I persevered. Mm -hmm. I think perseverance and don't give up. Don't give yeah. up. Perseverance is it. Here's what happened is I didn't do so well. And I uh, fortunately had a very good teacher. Her name was Margie Musich, and she's the late Margie Musich, and she was wonderful. And she was also kind. And as a teacher, you should have a heart. You need yeah. to have a heart. And understand that people have circumstances uh, or, you know, learning blocks that you can help them through. Mm -hmm. And so fortunately, at the end of that semester, or towards the end, she said, you're not going to make the grade that you need to be a graduate student and get past this course. And I know that your assistantship depends on it. Mm. So it's not only the hard work, but it's the people that yeah. you work, you know, who you know sometimes. Right. And she said, she said, if you get a B on my final exam, I will give you a B in the course. Now, whether I got no a B on the exam or not, I never went back to look at it but I got to be in the course by the skin of my teeth. Wow. And that's because she, she was a good teacher. Yeah. That could have been the end of it all. Mm -hmm. You know what? She was my assembler teacher and it was the same thing. I was, I'll tell you what, I didn't understand assembler at all. It's hard stuff. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand it at all, but here's the thing. And I still tell my students this today that are struggling. Mm -hmm. 
I took the book and spent the weekend at a friend's house. Both of us were taking assembler at the same time. And we laid on the floor of his of his living room, his mom's living room, uh -huh. and studied and yep. studied and studied. And I'll tell you what, suddenly the light bulb came on. Mm -hmm. And I got my B on my final exam in assembler, and I was off and running at that point. Right. So it's not only, it's it's really a lot about the teachers that you have mm -hmm. that save you. And, you know, I don't know if it's something from above that looked over me, you know, who knows, but uh, I was able to, I was able to get through the program and I really learned how to program best on the job. Mm -hmm. There's no other, there, I mean, you know that. You you can't, there's no substitute the for that. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my first two years were doing COBOL programming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, and it takes finesse and it takes time. It's not, uh, I love your stories because you have to, people have to know this is not something that is overnight. This takes no. time. It takes time. Uh, and even know. knowing the basics, even learning how to read a dump, even, um, gosh, figuring out what all of those abend error codes are. It takes time. It's not something that you're just going to say, oh, yeah, I got it. I mean, there's some people that do, don't get me wrong, but uh, it does take time. I, it takes but, good direction, too. Yeah. Now, I said something, I said something in our um, consortium uh, video that I'm sure some people took exception to. And it was about, you can't just be given a set of slides yeah. and pound away at them in the evening and then get a certificate or a digital badge. Okay. Now, here's what I mean by that. It's Tell important us. It's important to have hands-on leadership in learning programming. Mm -hmm. If you're learning a whole language mm -hmm. or even just some aspects of that language, that's what I meant. Yeah. You need guidance. You need somebody that's been through it before, that's been in the trenches. Mm -hmm. if, you're if you're learning COBOL, if you're learning Java, if you're learning how to do Android development or iOS. We know how much you love Android. I do it because <laughs> I have to. <laughs> I'm not going to start that with you. Yeah, today. don't, please. Uh, I'm, I'm finally understanding it. Yeah, you know, yeah, four years of programming because it's just been the problem about Android. Real quick is there are no textbooks, none. The textbook I'm using was produced uh, was copyrighted 2018. Well, everything in the world has changed in Android since yeah. then. Yeah, and I I had to take materials I got because I never took an Android class. It was yeah. thrown at me and said, you need to teach this class. And I had no exposure whatsoever and no preparation time. So I took those materials. I struggled. And I took those materials and I turned them in. I've had to correct them and update all of the materials so that I would have presentations to make in, in my lectures. But uh, where was I? Uh, oh, yeah. If you're learning these languages, uh, you're learning a language. You need direction. You need hands-on. You need somebody to lead you. I think mm -hmm. I feel that's very important. Now, if you're learning something new to add to your career, or you want to learn, uh, you know, a lot of these wonderful things that uh, different companies offer, even IBM, these training sessions that you can mm -hmm. do on your own, those are excellent. Those mm -hmm. are excellent. But I consider a lot of those very supplemental to the to the program, the actual programming that a lot of us do. Right. Um, and I feel strongly about that. And, you know, um, I think that um, I'm going to do a little plug here for the mainframe learning consortium. Mm -hmm. It's the MLC. It's really important that companies that don't want to pay for a lot of training, but still get, you know, two, three, five, or even 10 or more uh, beginning developers, COBOL or assembler, uh, or other that they want to get into their um, into their uh, employee staff, 
uh, joining the, the mainframe learning consortium is going to be a good way to do that. I take part in that. Cameron Say takes part in that. And uh, we do hands-on training. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what people need. Now, of course, I teach at NIU. Right. But that's, those are traditional students. Some of them are traditional, right. non-traditional, we call them. They're coming back for education, kind of like what I did. Right. And, and, uh, but the MLC is is something really important, and uh, people need to corporations need to join us in the consortium to make it make it useful to make it produce. Right, them. so they can have productive people in production. Now, yeah. I, I want to go back <clears throat> to the to the. Uh, part where you were talking about, you know, you need guidance when you're learning the, especially learning Z systems, because we, we, a lot of times people will take for granted that, oh, it's a computer, a computer is a computer is a computer. But when yeah. you're thinking about, when you're thinking about mainframes or any of the, um, the Z system suite, should we say, um, it's a little different. Now, one thing that I actually absolutely adored and loved was the fact that I had some really good mentors that were able to say, okay, I know that you really like um, inner skill. I say, yes, I really yeah. like inner skill. And they'd say, okay, well, I've taken a few courses, so I know what you're learning. Go learn this and then come back. And wow. then the next thing I would know, I would be sitting at, here at my desk, right on camera, asking all the questions. So when when I used that piece, when I used the inner skill piece, I was able to formulate these questions and um, and say, okay, well, how do they apply here with what we do? Mm -hmm. The was outstanding at just being like, okay, well, let me show you what we do and how we use this. How do we use workload manager? How do we use da 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 da? And so this is. Um, what you're saying, it's just it just music to my ears, no pun intended, because <laughs> you're right, you do have to have someone to actually come back with you and show you. And, and I think a, 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 a characteristic of a really good teacher is one that has the mindset of, I know this person does not know this and I want to show them the way. Yes, and that's exactly the way I try to teach. Is you do teach that from way. A, from a non-programmer aspect. Yep. And as I said before, it's how I learned it. That's how I, I try to prepare my lectures. Mm -hmm. My lectures aren't perfect. But the mainframe lectures, I'll be honest with you, I do have PowerPoint slides that sometimes yeah. I use. But well, you got to have some visual, right? Yeah, they're supplements yeah. for the students to use. Right. Most of the time, I just talk off the top of my head. Well, that's because you're the expert. Well, it's because I love. <laughs> You've been doing it for 22 years. <laughs> any any teacher or mentor has to love what they do. Now, I'll be honest. I hated programming. I hated it. I I just despised it, mm -hmm. and I thought I'm a creative person. I I'm a musician. I like to play in orchestras and bands. Right. I play French horn and. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the hunting horn as it used to be. <laughs> but the thing is, is uh, I found a niche yeah. through perseverance that I really, really love. And although I worked in industry, industry is really not my thing. I I don't like working in, in, in the industry um, because I don't like some of the politics and that kind of stuff, unfortunately. Now there are politics at the university too, but not nearly well, it's as everywhere you go, right? Yeah. It's it's there's and always gotta be something. That's right. And but the nice thing about what I do and here at NIU is we have autonomy mm. in deciding what to teach, pretty much. At least I do in my mainframe, because I'm pretty much it. I'm the only one. Yeah. So through my business knowledge, I've derived the best I can what these people need to learn in the time that we have. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't go into macros and assembler because we don't have time for it. Right. And IBM in the MacLib, sys1.maclib and whatever, 
there's thousands, thousands. of macros <laughs> to plug into your assembler program, you know? Right. So I don't teach macros. We used to teach it in the class, but we've had to come back a little bit because students today are a different kind of students that, than we had back in the old days. It's mm -hmm. just, there's been a huge change. They yeah. learn differently. They learn very differently. Very differently. And you got to have a good stopping point. Yes. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And it has to be very structured. It has to yeah. be very structured. So um, where was I going with this? Oh, I was telling you that how I teach mm -hmm. is I, I try to do it from my perspective of getting to that niche, that niche right. that I told you about uh, in learning something and enjoying it too. Yes. And mainframe, Ooh, yeah. mainframe is so different from anything these young people or anyone who's just joining, just yeah. being exposed to it, it's so different that they need they need to be handled very carefully. Yeah. That learn that first learning experience in mainframe has to be handled very carefully. Mm -hmm. And I try really hard to do that. I try to lead them through from, like I said, the perspective of someone who is coming from a non-programming background into the programming. And I think that's really important. And like I said, I've had a lot of success. I've seen a lot of success. Now, some people that go through my upper level mainframe company, they're doing things that have nothing to do with mainframe. Right. But there are some that have really become famous in at, at Share and beyond. It's amazing. There's, talk about some of those folks if you want to. Well, look at Stephen Perva, who's at Insano, yeah. you know, or Insano, whatever you call it. That's a great company, and he loves his job. Yeah. And he's even coming up with, um, you know, uh, attire that people can buy. Yeah, he's got uh, merch. He's buy. doing the Discord. Yeah. He's killing it. Yeah. And super smart. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And one of uh, all states' main systems programmers. Um, I forget his name. Anyhow, he's, he's a, a mainframe programmer, systems programmer for Allstate. You know, they used to be based in Chicago, and I think they've moved their base to Dallas. But, yeah. oh, uh, Chris Barber. Okay. Chris Barber. Oh, so he's in Plano? Or is okay. that Richardson now? You know, I they, don't remember. 75 goes right there, but <laughs> their building is gorgeous. Yes, well, they had a hell of a campus, forgive me. They have a hell of a campus here in, in Chicago that was in Northbrook in the suburbs. And I mean, it was gigantic. Yeah. And during my time at NIU as a graduate student, Margie Musich, who was my COBOL teacher and assembler teacher, she and I went there uh, to teach some corporate courses. Nice. Back in the late 80s. And so I got to see the inside of some of their facilities. It was pretty incredible. It didn't work out because... We, I think it was from all states' perspective that they couldn't get their stuff together to figure out what they wanted us to do when we were on their campus. Unfortunately, oh, like the curriculum. Yeah, well, okay. get, trying to get trying to get IDs for us to sign on. Yeah, with, or something like that. I forget, but we, excuse me, we did make it through it, but. That's um, very good. We didn't go to their campus to do it. We did it remotely, or not remotely, but. That's something, some kind of. Maybe it was like a satellite office or something. Yeah, too many years since then. It's but. it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I I would like to, I want to open something up. And I was talking to, um, you know, I, I, I love talking to you, uh, you professors. I was talking to Herb Bailey a couple of weeks ago. And I haven't aired that one yet. Uh, it's going to be great. But uh -huh. I was thinking about you. <laughs> and and I had asked, what do you think, Java or COBOL? So I'm gonna I'm going oh, to um, you're gonna you're, you're I'd like to give your answer. You're opening a can of worms. Okay, this has to be this has to be 120 seconds or less. Because I know <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, you know how I get. I know you're very well, passionate about this. I'm ready. Yeah, well, the thing is, is um, Java is a great language. Yeah. And I know a lot of people are trying to, you know, make everything, um, make everything Java. Make the world Java. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Well, here's the thing. Why waste money porting those languages, COBOL, over to Java when it doesn't need to be done? Hmm. Why? why is that, Professor? Because COBOL is a very approachable language. Very. Mm -hmm. So why take these billions of lines of code that are working great and they've been optimized and they've been debugged, tested? You know, programs at the company where I work, they, some of them have been running since the company was founded in 1969. And they don't have to be opened up to be fixed or enhanced. But, really? maybe, but maybe they might be at some point. So you got to have COBOL programmers. And even in the mainframe modernization tasks, you need people to look at the code. You need to, I swear, you need people that know assembler and know COBOL. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think that's an opinion. I think that's the truth. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that Allianz Bank just got off the mainframe and they're mm. brand new. But I'm very suspicious in many ways about whether they really shut down their mainframe. Have you heard? That's a question. It, I don't think that question was answered or that was stated in the article that I read on LinkedIn. I mean, congratulations to them to move all of their insurance stuff. I think it's insurance. Yeah, insurance onto a different platform. But I would be interested in seeing the whole picture. You I know, wonder if they're does. doing something like some sort of hybrid cloud or... Yes. But, but even with that, you would still utilize your COBOL. Well, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know if the whole picture is being explained and I may get in trouble for saying that, but I may get s snowballed with things from Allianz. I will have emails forever <laughs> after that statement, but, well, but, but the thing is, is you okay. can, modernization, mainframe modernization is important. Yeah. Yeah. Extremely important for the future and for now. But you're going to need developers that know COBOL. Why take something that ain't broke and try to fix it? Mm -hmm. And of course, you have to have the right tool for the right job. You don't just, hey, I think that this is going to work and, and I don't know. We're going to use Perl for everything. <laughs> I don't, I, I'm, I mean, that's very, you know, far from us, but I'm just, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And if it's been working for years, Decades. not saying that it's it's not good to improve because we can always improve in subtle ways. We can clean up the code. We can match it with whatever's working uh, that we're using right now. You know, we can create more space. We can mm -hmm. make things run faster. You know, we can schedule properly. Uh, but do you, remember, do you remember when the pandem pandemic started? New Jersey's uh, unemployment system went down. Mm -hmm. And everybody said, oh, it's COBOL. It's COBOL's yeah. fault. Yeah. It's not COBOL's fault. It's the equipment that New Jersey had invested in for that See, COBOL to run on. <laughs> but everybody thinks, oh, it must be that old system. It's got to be that old beat up system. No, it's not. COBOL runs like a bat out of hell. It does. Assembler even better, as long as people know what they're doing. Yeah. And both languages, uh, you know, Metal C is being used for a lot of uh, systems programming now, mm -hmm. uh, my understanding, not Assembler. But I always say this, and I'm going to get in trouble for saying it. Okay? Don't do it. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble for saying this. Here we go. Brace those, yourselves. <laughs> those that don't like assembler, the only people that don't like assembler are the people that can't do it. And I believe that completely. I will argue that. That's going to be a sound bite in my head for <laughs> I'm going to get in so much trouble for saying that. The emails are rolling in. My phone is going <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, uh, but, I, but, I'm one of those people that sometimes, uh, unfortunately, it's I'm unfortunate. Not, sometimes it's unfortunate. I uh, sometimes I say things uh, that are my opinion and my opinion only, and I think I really know what's going on. I'll admit that. Yeah. But I really feel that. I mean, Assembler is so cool. Mm -hmm. It is so cool that you can actually take and dynamically change an instruction using the EX or the execute X. instruction. Mm -hmm. Or that you can twiddle bits. You can do ands and ors and exclusive ors to flip them or whatever. Mm -hmm. With bit with bit masks, and it's it's a wonderful language. It's so powerful. Yes, mm -hmm. it takes a lot of work to learn it. Yeah. But I love to teach it, and I mean, I'll teach anybody assembler. Yeah. If they're willing to learn it. It's, you got to have the willingness. What to a learn. nerd, huh? What a nerd. I mean, we people <laughs> that do assembler, we're real nerds. <laughs> no, I think that I think that uh, a lot of the folks that that not only teach assembler but still code. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of you all are musicians. A lot of you are mechanics. Um, Ooh, don't that, ask me to be a mechanic. <laughs> no, seriously. People that know how to utilize their hands, connect the hand-eye coordination, they understand that there are processes in place and that they have to systemically go through, systematically go through one by one by one to make it happen. And I feel, you know, like you said, I can teach anybody. I love that. And you can teach anybody and anyone can learn. If, if, if you are watching this right now, okay, and you are trying to put your head around everything that Professor Decker is saying, learn this piece anyone can learn. Anyone can learn. It's not, it is hard, but you can learn it. You can do it. You have to persevere. You have to stay in the trenches. Just like when, um, like if, if we're in, in, in a concert, you know, and when we do the sound check or when we're going into practices, you always have your sheet music. You always have a pencil with a really good eraser yeah. and you're and, you know, and you're going through your tablature and you're OK. Let me mark this here. Oh, I need to take a breath here because Jeffrey's going to play his French horn on that side. Oh, let me do this. It's teamwork and it's it's learning and it's complete confidence that you can do it. You have to expect mm -hmm the outcome, you have to go in with the intention that I'm going to learn something new. I'm going to learn assembler and you have to expect for the outcome to be mm -hmm. that I have learned something about assembler and I'm going to continue and I'm going to use my learning tools. And then I'm going to go back to my instructor, my mentor, my coach, whomever it is that's teaching you and ask questions and learn hands on, put your hands on it, look, on, look at it, talk about it. Mm -hmm. do it again that's how that's how we sing that's how you play french horn yep. you know so yep. and i hate practicing i hate practicing french horn i hate, hate it practicing, <laughs> but i love playing yes especially when it comes out perfect well it never comes out perfect on the yes, horn it does it's a clam Sometimes. fest as we call it a clam <laughs> fest. a clam is missing a note on the horn on the horn but the thing is, is um, there are hurdles to get over. And as far as I know, the, the worst is that logic, learning logic and structure in programming and structured logic. And once you get over that, you can learn any language. Yeah. You can learn any language. But um, it's it's all about perseverance. And it, mm -hmm. it, like I said, if, if you really want to learn it, you got to pers persevere. Yeah, yeah, stick and, with it. Yeah, and uh, you're not going to like it. As I told you, I hated it when I first started. You know, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to go back to my old job. Yep. Where I was making back in those days probably $6.25 an hour or something like that. 
I couldn't pay my bills on that. So fortunately, I had the chance. You know, it was somebody from upstairs was looking down on me and helping me. And, and you know, I knew some really wonderful people that were willing to step in and knew that I was struggling yeah. and pointed me in the right direction. So hopefully people have that sort of mm -hmm. uh, mentorship also. That's important. Absolutely. And sometimes we don't have it. And but people can can do things on their own if they're really wanting to do it. You but, have uh, to have a good why. Why am yes. I even trying? Ugh. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, to better yourself. To better yep. yourself. Yep. You've got to have enough faith in yourself because if you don't, then you just kind of flat. You you fall flat on your face. You know mm -hmm. it. You know you can't sit up and be like uh, something something my mom used to say to me a lot. You got to walk by faith, not by sight. That's right. Like, well, you know, one of the things is, sometimes, you sometimes you have to take a little step backwards. Yeah. Like I quit my job in Kansas City to come teach. That's it. I took a huge pay cut, huge yep. pay cut. And uh, you're going to laugh at this. I'm only now through the union and the raises we've gotten back to where I was when I left Kansas City in 2001, only right now. Wow. In my back. So it's taken me 22 years to get to where I was when I yeah. stepped from that job. But the quality so many benefits, living, though. Oh, the quality of life. Your quality of life is like. It's so much better teaching. <laughs> right. I love it. That's a great right. job. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't think if you're watching, I know you are. Don't sit up and be like, yeah, if, if, if I see it, I'll believe it. No, you got to walk by faith, not by sight. You can't mm -hmm. just be like, oh, I don't see any of this happening. No, you have to expect for it to happen. That's it right. has to be expected. That's so, right. Jeffrey, before we land this jumbo jet, this 747 in first class. You're not going to push me off with a parachute, are you? No, no, you're sitting on... <laughs> On perfectly posh seats. Okay, good. With with a well crafted handbag and a hat. Good. In the overhead bin. <laughs> um, and some leather gloves. Let's 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 That's fulfill the whole fantasy. Leather gloves. <laughs> a perfect blazer. A comfortable tie. The yeah, the whole you know, pocket square. The whole thing. A Cary Grant moment. But yeah. um, I need to know. What what can you tell those that are trying right now? They're they're really really trying, and they are trying to learn COBOL. They're trying to understand conceptual assembler, not necessarily because we all know that you'll never touch it unless you touch it and you mastered it. Mm -hmm. um, how much can they expect to get paid after they take a course? and get some practice. I, I hate to bring money into it, but I think money has a lot to do with it because we have yeah. people on the distributed side, you know, yeah. that are perfect in Python, perfect in C, perfect in PowerShell, right? And able to just manipulate anything. If they were to take the time to learn a little something about COBOL and or Assembler, how much could they expect to make? Coming from well, distributed. I have students um, coming out of my upper level mainframe course, uh, which I call a smorgasbord of mainframe stuff because we learn JCL. Mm -hmm. We learn how to write JCL for the co Cobalt compiler, the high level assembler, and the binder. Mm -hmm. and then we do QSAM and assembler, and then we do, they learn Cobalt basics, and then do more assembler, and then they take it they do a COBOL tables program and then they start combining them mm -hmm. calling external sub programs those people i've had students that have been offered as much as 110,000 to start just starting that, that's in chicago that's yeah. that's that's it's, it's expensive to live around here For but sure. uh, but mean, you know, they've people. been offered 110 120 yeah. uh, k and um you know it, it the thing is, if you go to go to work for a company that has COBOL 
or and or assembler, they're going to be doing everything. That company, if they have a mainframe, they're going to do front ends, yep. user interfaces in Java FX or whatever, yep. or in other languages. They're going to be doing iOS development. They're going to be doing Android development. I mean, everything. Everything. So, it, so they can code. find a spot on the mainframe is what you're saying. Yeah. Well, With their yeah. skills. Or not even touching the mainframe that they not even the, touching it. Yeah, that's it. They're gonna, they're gonna be able to find a job in that company, but the COBOL mm -hmm. can give them an in, an important in to that job, to yep. that company. And I'll tell you what, all of us old guys were retiring. And as we leave, those management positions open. Mm -hmm. So it's a fast track for the young people. It's, yeah. a, it's gonna be a fast track. But they need to get in there. We need COBOL developers. Yeah. This this world. Because as Cameron Say says, the world runs on COBOL. It sure does. The financial world. I heard something like 80% of all current running code, including Java, iOS, Android, you name it. 80% mm -hmm. of it is COBOL. I can believe that. Now, it may be wrong, but that's what I've heard, 80%. And those billions of lines of COBOL, as I say, they're not going anywhere. Right. And, you know, all of us old guys that wrote it and that maintained it all these years or developed in it, mm -hmm. we're all going away. Mm -hmm. and, and the world is in trouble. The world is in trouble because the mainframe isn't going away either. Mm -mm. The throughput of the mainframe cannot be matched in any other situation. I, I honestly feel that way. Mm -hmm. So young people that want to learn it, now's the time. Now is the time. Right. Now's the time to learn it and start your career in, in mainframe. And I'm here to help. If you're interested, they can send me an email and I'll talk about it with them or whatever. So I love that. I yeah, love can it. I, can I post my email somewhere? Do I dare? Maybe, maybe they can just um, hit you up on LinkedIn because that's yeah, where, yes. if yes. that's okay. Yes, Jeffrey yeah. Decker. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm not on LinkedIn as much as I am Facebook, although it's more and more and more all the time. All the time. <laughs> yeah, because LinkedIn has, you know, I wouldn't know you if it hadn't been for LinkedIn. I wouldn't have been involved in the mainframe learning consortium or no Gary Gwaltney of knowledge transfer or Cameron Say and all of the other people from IBM. Yeah. Sherry Chiari, who is now a friend of mine and right. uh, Libby and Gracia. I mean, I don't know those people except through, through uh, LinkedIn. It's been wonderful. Right. And so many that I'm not naming that are wonderful and They'll, they're there to support you too. Mm -hmm. And I love to tell folks, you know, there's this thing, there's this whole thing called IBM champions. I'm mm -hmm. an IBM champion. You, Jeffrey, are an IBM champion. Cameron Say, IBM champion. Like most of the people that teach are champions. And so, I mean, Darren Search, uh, Stephen Perva. Uh, oh, the list David just goes on and on and on. And like Sherry just said, the mainframe community on LinkedIn is amazing. And that's true. <laughs> and if you're young and you're interested in this stuff, join the IBM community in some way because mm -hmm. it is really, they're there to support us. Yeah. All of us, young. And we know that the world um, the world belongs to the young. <laughs> it really does. And so what about me? <laughs> hey, you know what? It belongs to us old folks too. But you're not nearly as old as I. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm the I'm the middle sister and the good aunt. That's that's what I like. There to you go. <laughs> I've got grand nephews. That's it's gotten to the point where I have grand nephews and niece. Yeah. I've got one grandniece and I forget how many grandnephews. Absolutely. So. Well, you know, you look great. And you know what? Let's just be fabulous together. It's all good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're too kind. 
<laughs> um, this lighting is, is really good. So I yeah, think that. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I you know, I just every time we talk, I just I love it because I get to know you more and more, and. On top of that, I get to get this inside scoop that I normally wouldn't have, you know. Um, it may be all wrong, or at least in part wrong. <laughs> but at least you get it may be a little <laughs> inaccurate, no. Uh, but I do want to, I see Sherry in the chat. First, yeah. can we say hi to Sherry? Because Sherry's always like, Oh, sure. I'll tell you uh, what, she keeps on top of interest in the mainframe. That's all there she is. She does. Uh, she's she's saying that uh, for IBM and the community. Thank you, Sherry. Yep. Yeah, thank you. We appreciate you. There thank are you. a whole bunch of paths. There are tons of paths. I take a. Um, I'm I'm taking a IBM cloud advocate or cloud architect course right now. Mm -hmm. Intense course. Um, but I have mentors. I take your yeah. advice because we have to know, we have to have the COBOL piece. We have to have all of those pieces. Mm -hmm. We have to know what is good to, to implement and what isn't, what's the right tool for the job. So I love that. Um, is there anyone that you want to shout out before we land the plane? Well, yeah, I think uh, Dr. Robert Ranney. Um, he's living with his son now, retired in uh, Los Angeles, and uh, and you know there are so many that I just I can't begin to name. Unfortunately, some of them are gone now. Uh, Dr. Rodney and Gotti, who was our wonderful department chair uh, at NIU's Com Department of Computer Science, he was like a surrogate father to me, mm -hmm. and really helped me through that difficult program and was willing right. to bend willing to bend the rules a little bit just to help me get my master's degree mm -hmm. and that that set me off on the rest of my life and my career and you know he was an inspiration and still remains an inspiration to me mm -hmm. and there's just so many there's just so many i mean there's dr cameron say i mean he's an inspiration to me too because He's a legend in in this environment and my hero and outside of this environment and he's just he's always encouraging me and he's always encouraging all of us to persevere yeah and get young people into the mainframe and mm -hmm. that's that's important we have to make it approachable to them that's what i tell other educators as sherry asked me Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think she had a question or a, yeah, what's your advice for other educators? That is a good question. We're over time, but you know what? We got the time. Go ahead. I'm, I'm here for, if you, if you're willing to answer, go ahead. You bet. Well, I don't know everything about educating. We, oh, come on. Developers. I, I would never pretend. But the thing is, is you have to encourage because it's something they've never, these young people have never seen before. And like I said, some of them aren't so young. They've never been exposed to it before. Mm -hmm. So you have to be kind and you have to be patient. You gotta and be nice when you teach folks you, stuff. Yes, and you have, to, you have to be willing, you have to be willing to answer their questions. Yeah. And today, here's one of the things that I find with young people is they don't have the analytical skills that they need. And I always tell them, you can learn languages and you can learn how to work around the computer. Yeah. But you've got to work on those analytical skills. You've got to know how to read a word pro a problem mm -hmm. and distill out of that what needs to be done to solve the problem with the uh, computer programming. Mm -hmm. And so the thing that's going to separate those that are really successful from those that maybe are just okay is those analytical skills. Right. Right. Now, it's hard to find a place that teaches you analytical skills. Mm -hmm. You just have to practice them. You have to find, a book, find a book that has word problems, mm -hmm. even arithmetic word problems, something, and then derive from that. You know, um, reading and comprehension. That's where it all 
begins. Mm. Being able to read and comprehend what you've just read from lots of different authors. And that brings me to another big thing is read, reading. You've got to read. And diver diversify oh, what you read. Science. Yep. You've got to read history. you got to read yep. autobiography. You've got to read biography. I mean, it's not all just reading some of the stuff that's being printed today, but that helps too. Mm -hmm. But you've got to build those analytical skills and reading and comprehension, right. I think, is the beginning of that. Mm -hmm. And so Absolutely. to other educators, I say, distill what's important in what you're teaching and do that through experience and that, write it down, list it out. These are the things and the order in which they need to be presented. Mm -hmm. That's, I, 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 that's, that's, if I've been successful, it's that I've done that and that works. Right, right. Step by step distillation. Piece by piece. Uh huh. Yes. From the lowest level up. Mm -hmm. And I look at some of the textbooks coming out today in computer programming, and it's just silly what I'm seeing because they're not doing that. Some of them do, some of them have been very successful, mm -hmm. but many just don't. They just throw stuff at the students and i i don't i don't pretend that these people that these students know anything about what they're learning mm -hmm. i start from the ground up yeah in every class in every class not not just in cobol or right. some right so. teaching as if nobody knows anything even if you have like superstars in your course there's going to be something that you will learn. There, there will be something that you will, even if you know everything, if you learn it as if you don't know, it will benefit you completely. Mm -hmm. completely. Mm -hmm. I would teach, I would show folks how to blonde, right? And I would say, okay, so, and they'd be like, oh, no, I got it. I got, no, you don't. No, you don't. You didn't lift all the way into pale banana yellow. You have to lift that hair. You have to deposit. Okay. You, you have to allow for it to process and you have to write down your formulas. Mm -hmm. Folks don't know that. You know, well, I'll tell you what. What's the, programming. Yeah. What's the first thing I teach in assembler? <laughs> how to how to write your stuff down. You say. From what I remember, you said, make sure that you document. Don't be yes. a, a non-documenter. Yes. <laughs> I fixed so many people's code. <laughs> when I was in business, I fixed so much code that was spaghetti. Yep. Structured programming. Always structured programming. And if you can, even in the object-oriented languages like Java yeah. or other, one entry point one exit point always always mm -hmm. sometimes you can't yeah granted but please return return at the end of the function you know mm -hmm. don't pass flags up right or excuse me don't pass flags Damn. Down. right yeah see i remember yeah. yeah, and you got to teach. You got to teach uh, cohesion and coupling, even yeah. in today's object-oriented programming. Mm -hmm. Cohesion and coupling. You've got mm -hmm. to teach the different levels and what's acceptable and what's not. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. But in in assembler, I start with teaching them the binary numerical system, and then I teach them hexadecimal. Mm -hmm. That's where I start. You have to. Wow. You have to teach them what, what's the one's complement of a binary number or mm -hmm. a sum or a x decimal. Excellent. You have to teach them what the two's complement is and what it represents. Mm -hmm. And that's those are the basics. Those are the building blocks. And then I teach them the very basic assembler instructions: store, load, load address. You know, it's just it, these are things that they'll always use. Yeah but they have to start at the very beginning 
you know, as Julie Andrews sings. But start started at the very, very beginning. Day. The beginning is a wonderful place to start. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I absolutely, you know what? I, I think I have the best uh, hobby ever, number one, um, which is my mainframe advocacy. And you instructors are probably my favorite part. So you and uh, Colin. Um, Colin Pierce. Colin Pierce. Oh, he's awesome. Yeah, he's he's a mainframe god. Yeah. Uh, who else? Oh, Cameron Say. Cameron Say. Cameron yeah. Say. Yep. Uh, Herb Daly. Karen Search. Reg Harbeck. Reg Harbeck. Darren. It's it's. You educators, Dusty Rivers, all those guys that we've not mentioned. Yeah, I yeah. I just they're all the unique thing. personalities. They're all unique personalities. Yeah. And when I went to share last uh, March, gosh, I got to meet so many heroes and people that I respect so much because yeah. they're doing a lot for the mainframe advocacy mm -hmm. too. Far more than I've ever done. So right. it's the last year has been really eye opening since we did our first training session with knowledge transfer mm -hmm. uh, for the people with Fifth Third Bank. I mean, that's that was eye opening and it was so much fun. Yeah. And we want to continue that success with the Mainframe Learning Consortium. And hopefully, companies will be listening and say, hey, you know, I want people that learn COBOL. And yeah. this is do it mm -hmm. yeah talk to jeffrey decker or gary gewaltney or sam cameron Kim, Kim or, yeah and that's just the way to do it i i absolutely positively adore you you are one of my favorite people <laughs> i think you know that uh yeah. fellow ibm champion amazing professor and uh just a really awesome person period you're making my head explode but well it better yeah yeah you you are you are great you are great and and i love all my guests you know because i only i only ask people to come on that i'm really when i look i say oh these individuals are really putting in the work and um you know whether they are ambassador Z ambassadors or IBM champions or work for IBM or some other company. Um, mm -hmm. It's just, it's been an amazing ride and you all have contributed to people that are new to Z systems. And that's a Z community, an IBM community, by the way, got to go check that out. Um, you guys have done just fabulous and you Jeffrey are just cream of the crop. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <Make you remember. laughs> so we will talk to you soon. And um, thanks for coming on. We went over a little bit, but that's okay. Well, thank you. You're I talk welcome. too much. I've, been, I've heard that all my life. I talk too much. You don't talk too much. We just have a lot to say. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, thank you so much uh, for having me. I welcome. really appreciate it. And I hope that people will... Uh, give mainframe a chance. And uh, as a career, it's a wonderful thing. And there are so many people out there uh, to support you if you're interested. Absolutely. So if you're young and you're vibrant and you're And even if you're not young. Yeah, yeah I shouldn't say that. <laughs> if, if you're like me. My own people. I'm turning my back on my own people. <laughs> <laughs> if you're like me. If you're like Leticia. Um, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I think, you know, if you're interested, just let us know yeah. and we'll get you into some type of training program. There's lots of them out there. There's lots but of if them. You learn COBOL or assembler. You see me and roll it in IU if you have to. I mean, come through, come yeah. through. Uh, you know, I asked, um, Dr. Owar from, um, ASU down in Georgia and I, and I asked him, I said, well, how can people get started? He's like, they need to get into a program, yes. you know, and that's 
another, another mainframe person that teaches, mm -hmm. you know, you mm -hmm. all are fantastic. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. And I'll go ahead and, and close out here. Um, I'd like to thank our special guest, Professor Jeffrey Decker. You can find him on LinkedIn. He says he's on Facebook too, but um, y'all don't go and bombard him on Facebook. You do this on LinkedIn, stay professional. Okay, <laughs> stay professional. Um, LinkedIn would probably be, be the better, you know, if it's yeah. <laughs> maintain development. Hey, I have a selfie of me. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, so I'd like to thank our special guest, Jeffrey Decker, and um, uh, all of the great work that he does um, for our community of mainframers and these systems as a whole ecosystem because it is a whole ecosystem. We learned a lot today. We learned that, you know, you have to persevere. You got to stick with it. You got to walk by faith, not by sight. It's not what you see. It's what you feel deep inside that's going to keep you going. You got to find your why. We also learned that you need to find a good mentor or coach or tutor or whatever it is, instructor, uh, to be able to help you to expand your knowledge. You have to be able to write it down and apply it, talk about it, and do it again. And it's not going to take overnight. It's not going to be something that's super fast. This is going to be something that happens over time. But if you do what what some of our guests are telling you to do, especially Jeffrey, guess what? You will succeed. And it doesn't matter if you do hair, if you walk dogs for a living, if you cook, if you create recipes, it doesn't matter. What matters is, is your willingness to learn mm -hmm. and take direction and your willingness and time and stick with itness to do it. So there's a lot of communities out there. You can go to uh, IBM's website and they have a community called New to Z. Um, you can find, you know, all sorts of, of resources there. There's tons of, of learning um, programs like the Mainframe Learning Consortium um, that Jeffrey is a part of. Uh, you know, you've got Interskill. There's like, there's tons that you can do. You can do Z Explorer if you've never seen a mainframe or what it actually does. That's free. It's free 99 and it's made just for you. These Important. skills, oh yeah, these skills are out here for you. The mm -hmm. opportunity is here, it's waiting for you. So you need to take it. So I wanna thank everybody. My name is Leticia Caro. Come back with us. We do this every Sunday. You can come back with us uh, around 12 o'clock, around 12 noon EDT, New York mm -hmm. time. Um, and of course, you can watch the playback uh, on LinkedIn and let's see, Facebook, as well as YouTube. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I like to thank everybody. Um, you have yourself a wonderful day. And don't forget to be kind and get these skills. I'll talk to you soon. Bye, everybody. <laughs>